Nearly 20 years, the city passed sweeping legislation that laid out a goal of eradicating childhood lead poisoning by 2010, but now with thousands of city kids still showing unsafe lead levels every year. The city council is considering a whole new package of laws. Some advocates and parents tell CBS2 investigative reporter Tim McNicholas the current laws have fallen way short. When nine-year-old Carter Nunez smiles, his mother, Sakia Colon, cherishes the moment. 23, that's 23. <laughs> because she's also seen his pain. The challenges of being autistic and nonverbal, and on top of that, he's suffered lead poisoning. I think it could have made him regress in some way because before Carter would give me words, um, there was a point where he was giving me at least 50 words. In 2019, after Carter's blood test first showed high lead levels, a city inspection found peeling paint containing lead at their apartment in the Kingsbridge Heights section of the Bronx. Children can suffer brain damage or stunted development from ingesting paint chips or dust containing lead. The landlord says they took immediate action to fix the problems. But last spring, the city again found hazardous amounts of lead in the apartment after Carter's blood test showed even higher levels, about 15 times the average amount for a child. That's got to be heartbreaking for you. It's very heartbreaking because sometimes you kind of, even though you know I didn't put the lead here, um, you feel like it's kind of your fault because... You're here. You can't get out of here. The building owner says they worked quickly to fix it the second time, too. But today, Cologne wonders whether this peeling paint or the dust that quickly piles up on her windowsill is actually lead free. I am doing the most that I can. I've gone to court. And Carter isn't the only one suffering in this neighborhood. Here in the 14th District, the city has taken landlords to court over lead violations more often than any other area of the city more than 560 times since 2006. There are still loopholes that allow lead hazards to persist. 14th District Council Member Pierina Sanchez is sponsoring a bill that would require landlords who get lead violations to show records, proving they've inspected for lead hazards in the past and worked to fix any hazards. We've seen dramatic declines in, in the, the rates, but now the disease is one that affects you if you are black, Latino, Asian, if you are from a low-income community. Since 2004, landlords in older buildings are required to inspect for lead hazards each year and keep records of it in any apartment with a child younger than six and to remove any lead paint from surfaces like door frames and window sills before a new tenant moves in. The city did not start regularly citing landlords for breaking those two rules until 2019. Cologne and her lawyer, Reuven Frankel, are suing both the current and former owners of Cologne's building, saying, based on the city's laws, the problem should have been found and fixed years earlier. We keep on passing laws, but we don't, we keep, but we, we don't do the follow-up and the follow-through. The, the laws are great. But they have to be enforced. The city has ramped up enforcement in the last few years for those two requirements. But some parents say they're still not proactive enough. For example, a 2020 law requires landlords of older buildings to arrange a specific kind of test that can detect lead through multiple layers of paint. The law gives most landlords until 2025. But if a child younger than six lives in the home, the test is required within a year. So far, the city has only issued 21 violations for landlords not having that test done. They have to do better. I think that... Whatever laws that they have in place, they should do a better job of enforcing it. In emails, the city's Department of Housing Preservation and Development told CBS2 they did issue hundreds of thousands of violations for peeling paint even before 2019, which included about a dozen at the building where Cologne lives. When she moved in in 2013, about a year before Carter was born, her landlord was BN Realty Associates. Then, in 2016, Ved Parkash and Parkash Management bought the building. Parkash agreed to pay $60,000 in penalties in 2021 after the city found more than 50 lead violations across several other buildings he owns. Neither Parkash nor BN Realty Associates would agree to an interview for this story. In a statement, Parkash Management said it followed all city lead paint laws at Cologne's apartment. I feel like if he would have done things right, the first time around, we wouldn't be here again. Cologne and Carter are now waiting to hear from the city as to whether Parkosh really has fixed the problems. Until then, are you confident that 
it's safe in here? No, I'm not confident that it's safe in here. Council is considering a few other bills. One is aimed at getting landlords to act faster to remove lead on door frames and window sills in homes with children. Some landlords are saying they don't want remediation to create new hazards. And on that other law we mentioned, they're saying they're already required in some cases to show compliance records. Maurice. Tim, so what are you supposed to do if you're a tenant and you think your building has lead issues? What do you do? Well, the Department of Housing Preservation and Development tells me they audit hundreds of buildings each year, but they also inspect in response to complaints and spend millions trying to fix hazards. So the number one thing is to speak up. Tell the city. You can also search the city's open data to see if there have been any lead violations in your building in the past. We'll have a link to that on our website, cbsnewyork.com. Yeah, you really have to stay on it. Yeah. Tim, thanks so much. Sure. Great reporting.